Holiday. No. Look, I'm, I'm looking for something a bit different. How can I put this? You got a girlfriend, Kendall? Not at the moment, no. Well, let's say you have. Yeah, but I haven't. Pretend you have. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> go on. Right, so now you've got a girlfriend. Yep, got a girlfriend. And you've got a wife. Wife? <laughs> you got problems. You're telling me. Mum's gonna kill me. I didn't even invite her to the wedding. <laughs> Look, I don't want a family holiday. I don't want an adventure holiday. I want a wealthy businessman, gorgeous young secretary sort of holiday. You mean a don't tell the wife sort of holiday? Because if she ever finds out, she'll cut me nuts off sort of holiday. <laughs> well, I'm not really sure that's the sort of holiday I want to sell you. You've got to take the girlfriend away. If you don't take her away, she's threatened to tell your wife. Destroy your marriage, ruin your career. Ruin my career? Tell me about Barbados. Todd. <laughs> Pick the tickets up in a couple of days. Apparently, Mr. France, you've also qualified for a free weekend in Paris. <laughs> Very nice. I could send both sets of tickets to your house if you like. <laughs> it's all part of the friendly service. I'll pick them up. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, I'm not oh. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. I'm like, and I got distracted. Bit of business. Yeah, Barbados. There's a bird over there with a set of legs this long. <laughs> Barbados, how much did he spend? 4,970. Yes! <laughs> when do we go? Go where? Customer spends more than 4,000 pounds on a holiday, gets a free weekend for two in Paris, right, friends? Right. Right, only instead of telling him, we nick it here. Do we? Yeah! <laughs> it's a perk, free weekend. Nicking people's free weekends isn't particularly moral, is it, Lenny? Oh, stuff moral. Oh, God, God, there they are. There they are. There they are. Kendall, look, come here, come here, come here. What? Come here, those legs I was telling you about. What? Right there, with that gorgeous bird on top. Can you talk sense? <laughs> I'm talking sense. Look, God, God, she's gorgeous. She's poetry. She's, she's coming, coming in. in. She's... <laughs> Watch and learn. <laughs> Hello, Leonard Smart, how can I help you? Hello. 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 <laughs> Can I go I saw you from across the street. Leonard Smart, how can I help you? Will you shush, please? <laughs> you are Terry Pavey. No. But I was at school with a guy called Terry Pavey. Well, so was I. I, uh, remember you. You, uh... Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, well, uh... Well, I was in Mrs. Frampton's class, good at sport. I, uh, I sat next to that kid that used to wet himself during math. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, I remember, I remember. That was, that was me. <laughs> You're joking. You're not, uh, Kendall Baines. <laughs> and you are Philippa Gottley. They used to call you gutters, didn't they? <laughs> oh, what did they used to call me? Uh, puddles. <laughs> whoa, 
we'll, 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 we'll
Oh, oh, and you're right about that shirt as well. What about the shirt? Philippa said it was hideous and disgusting. <laughs> what did you say? I said it was yours. <laughs> well, Mr. Smart! Come in. Well, I'd love to stand and chat here all day if I could, but I've got to go and sell a £4,000 holiday so you can have your weekend for two in Paris. Excuse me. <laughs> Why can't we go to Bridlington like every year? <laughs> I'm not sure if we can afford to go on safari, Mr. Smart. Well, at these prices, you can't afford not to, Mrs. Buxton. Look, having made camp for the night, well within the safety of your compound, your safari... I don't want to be in the safety of a compound. I want adventure. Mr. Smart? Yeah, I'm with uh, clients, Mr. Baines, thank you. Uh, your safari guide will look after... I want after to everything. go to Bridlington. <laughs> well, I want to feel my blood chill as I confront the savage anger of a lion. <laughs> Sorry about my wife. A safari is a smashing idea, so keep trying. <laughs> Great. Honey, what? what? Please, will you excuse me? Oh, have you sold it yet? Strangely, no. You see, I've got this idiot that keeps popping his head around and interrupting me. <laughs> but will you sell it? Yes, yes, I will sell it. Now, can I get on with the job? Okay, absolutely, absolutely. Sorry, sorry, I'm just excited. I'm just nervous. I'm excited. <laughs> oh, no. You've got every right to be excited. <laughs> I think me and Philippa have got a future. What do you mean a future? We talking about you and Philip and I haven't got a future. Says who? Says me. Says the ten years experience I've got on you. Whoa, whoa, hang on a minute. Wait yeah. a minute. You was the one that encouraged me to get out, meet beautiful yeah, you women. You meet them, you leave them, you don't get involved. Well, maybe I want to get involved. Maybe I want a serious relationship. Look, a saucy weekend for two in Paris is one thing, but you don't commit to people. People let you down, have your fun, whoa, that bang, plenty of it. <laughs> talking oik again. I'm talking truth. All right, well, I'd I, I prefer not to talk then. Well, you know. I prefer not to, to listen that. to the bitter rantings of a man who's angry because his wife left him. Hey. Hey, that's not fair. I told you that stuff in confidence, Kendall. Yeah, well, you blame the entire female species because of what happened with your wife. Hey, you're out of order, Kendall. You won't admit it, will you? You won't admit that you love her. See, you can't even express your true emotions. Well, that hurts. <laughs> Sorry. No, not that. I just put my hand in a pile of drawing things. <laughs> Mr. Smart! Yeah? You're going nowhere. Everything all right? No, everything's not all right. Oh. She doesn't think I should confront the savage anger of a lion. What about your allergy, Frank? If he gets near next door's cat, his skin gets all pussy, scabby and unpleasant. Really? I mean, Lord knows what Latin if he confronts a lion. Because they're bigger. <laughs> the bigger the better, son. I want adventure. Anyway, Boots have got this new cream. I rub it on and confront the lion, confident that I won't get the allergy. <laughs> yeah, but can you be certain that you won't get your head ripped off? Because <laughs> I've got a feeling Boots don't do a cream for that. <laughs> See, all in all, I think the safest bet is forget the safari and do, you know, what... Mr. Buxton wants adventure, Mr. Smart. I understand that Bridlington does a reasonable line in ferocious landladies, Mr. Baines. <laughs> Bridlington's page here. Would you just excuse me, sir? I'm really fond of you, Kendall, but I'm not going to stand by and watch you make the same mistake that I did. Love them and leave them before they love and leave you. Well, Philippa might not want to leave me. Oh, boy, you've got a lot to learn. Yeah, and your ex-wife has got a lot to answer for. I'm the next customer through that door, I am selling them a major holiday, right? Not unless I get there first, mate. Yeah? Yeah. Shot! <laughs> Morning. Smart. I'll be with you in a minute. How can I help you? Do you mind, Mr. Baines? I'm trying to serve this lady. Strangely enough, Mr. Smart, oh. so am I. Go, Go away. away. No! <laughs> Shall we start again? Sorry, good idea. Good morning. How can I help you? Well, I'm looking for something cheap. Yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Uh, my assistant, Mr. Baines, will help you. No, I don't want to look. Kendall, will you look after the lady, please? Thank you. How are we doing here? All right. <laughs> exactly how cheap? Well, I don't know. Uh, maybe six, uh, seven thousand pounds. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Is there a problem? Not only that you should be dealing with the senior salesman. Would you like to say, Sue? Yeah, I'll be dealing with the senior salesman if you're being careful. Mr. Yeah. Smart? Yeah, I'll be right with you in a minute, Mrs. Buxton. Right. I'm just going to So, do you think you can help me? I think we can help each other. Mr. Smart! Mr. Smart! <laughs> it's, um, it's a somewhat delicate situation. I'm looking for somewhere discreet. Go on. 
a sort of um, wealthy, bored housewife, um, handsome young gardener sort of holiday. You mean a don't-tell-the-husband sort of holiday? Because, because if he found out... Oh, Mr so Frank, sorry, um, I've got your tickets. Good lad. Jean. Uh, uh, <laughs> you two know each other? We're married to each other. Ooh, blimey. <laughs> Tickets, George. What are you doing here? Tickets? Tickets. Oh, tickets. Yes, of course, the tickets. I'm, uh, He's, uh... I'm picking up the tickets for a surprise anniversary holiday I've arranged for us. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> I beg your pardon? Brilliant. What a brilliant time you're going to have. What are you doing here? Well, by a remarkable coincidence, uh, I was about to arrange a surprise anniversary holiday for us. <laughs> so we were arranging surprise anniversary holidays for each of us? Yes! <laughs> Weren't we? Yeah. <laughs> and now you're both surprised, aren't you? Surprise! So you won't be wanting a holiday, Mrs. Franks? Apparently not. Your tickets, Mr. Franks. Thank you. Thank you. Good day, gentlemen. Bye. Bye. Darling. Well, that's fate's way of saying that you and Philippa weren't supposed to be together. <laughs> Kendall, why are you smiling? Because I'm happy. <laughs> Kendall, why are you happy? Because I'm smiling. <laughs> Kendall, why aren't you making any sense? Where are my bloody Paris tickets? I'm sorry? Where are his bloody Paris tickets? <laughs> well, I don't know. Um, maybe we should call your wife back in and ask her. In fact, we can ask lots of things, can't we? <laughs> <laughs> okay, then. Happy holiday! <laughs> you and I are going to have words. Go on, we'll talk later. No, I can't later. I had Philippa on the phone. I'm going to meet your mum later. A <laughs> mum. Mrs. Smart. Wait a minute. Tell me I didn't hear you correctly. Tell me I just didn't hear you say that you were going to meet a. Oh God, I can hardly bring myself to say the word. A mum. <laughs> I'm taking a daughter to Paris for the weekend. It's only proper that she meets me, isn't it? Oh, golden rule, Kendall. But sit down. Golden rule, boy. If I teach you nothing else, let me teach you this. You meet your mates at football, girls on a dance floor. Eventually you're going to meet your maker, but what you never do, you never meet a mum. Next thing you'll be staring all gooey-eyed through a jeweler's shop window. That's so ridiculous. Kendall? Oh, hi. What are you doing? Um, nothing, nothing. Well, come on, because mum's waiting for us in the pub. Right. Brilliant. <laughs> Come on, another one, big sloppy one on the cheek. Come on, Gilby. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you, you know what that is, don't you? It's rather unpleasant, then. it? <laughs> oh, no, 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 you'll never know, you'll never know. It's affection, that is. Oh. Masculine affection. Oh, right, yeah. Kendall says I can't stroll to affection. I can stroll to affection. Yeah. Gilby. Hey, Gilby. Yeah. Do you want to see some true affection? <laughs> Not particularly, Lenny, no. I ain't shy to show my love, you know. I ain't angry. <laughs> I'm not angry at the world. I'm not one of them angry and bitter types that just gets angry at the world. You know, basically, I'm just, you know, I'm just these soppy nuts over there making a fool of himself. Hey, pathetic. <laughs> pathetic. Know that man at the bar, Kendall? Um, he's a business associate of sorts, Mrs. Gottlieb. <laughs> it's a long and rather sad story, actually. <laughs> anyway, having arrived at Charles de Gaulle Airport... Oh, a laid on car whisks us straight to the hotel. Separate rooms, of course. Why? <laughs> Why what? Well, what have you got separate rooms? 
Well, I was under the impression that during the night you would expect me to be um, separated from your daughter. Oh, I want you to know that I'm a gentleman and I have no intention. Oh, you best discuss your intentions with Philippa. She makes her own decisions. She's a big girl now. <laughs> it's certainly filled out. Can you pardon, Colonel? What I mean is that she was she, and now. <laughs> Three of the same, please. That's your fault, that is. I blame you for that. Well, I haven't done nothing. You've been a bad influence on I'm me. I'm not a bad influence, I'm a mate. I'm saying stuff I shouldn't be saying. I've just told Philippa's mum that Philippa's filled out. And she has. <laughs> I know, but I don't want to tell her mum that, do I? Well, I shouldn't worry about it, Kendall. Her mum's probably found out by now. <laughs> Philippa's development isn't the sort of thing you can keep under your hat. <laughs> Or maybe a large Stetson. <laughs> Before I met you, I would have never have said anything like that. It's you talking oik all the time. <laughs> it's rubbing off on me. Oh, I tell you what, a weekend away from you will do me good. Yeah. No more oik talk. Nice talk. Nice talk about nice things. No more rudeness. Oi, you're two pence short. Stuff it. <laughs> oh, that's rude, isn't it? That's nice. Stuff you as well. That's rude too. Rude, rude, rude. You shouldn't be rude to your mates. That's the worst kind of rudeness, that is. Kendall. Kendall. Your friend doesn't seem very happy, Kendall. Oh, he's never happy, Mrs. Gottlieb. As I said, it's a long and very sad story. No wonder he drinks. <laughs> Shame. Oh, I like this head, Bert. I'll have some of this. Danny, I'm saying I'll have some of this. What, sorry? Fuegon. What? Fuegon. It's a revolutionary new aftershave with a distinctive smell of man. <laughs> The moment some woman appears with sucking great long legs and wrapping herself around a large bottle of aftershave, you want to buy it. <laughs> yes, you do. You and Kendall, you're both the same. You start thinking about women, you stop thinking. Oh, dear. Oh, God, they'll be up there now. Hey? On the plane. Kendall making an idiot of himself. Oh, look, Philippa, here comes the English post. Whoop, oh, there it goes. They're ever so fast, these planes, aren't they, Philippa? <laughs> like a sea of candy floss. Pathetic! Pathetic! <laughs> we'll be standing on top of the Eiffel Tower about now. You know, kissing and whispering and watching people's hats blow off. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's going to be the same old story, Gilby. Boy meets girl, boy falls in love with girl, boy offers his heart to girl. Girl takes his heart, puts on her high heels and stamps on it. Oh, come on. It might not be like that for Kendall. <laughs> well, oh, it was like that for me. Well, maybe Kendall's going to be, you know, like an exception. Some people are the exception. Some people end up happily ever after. Like who? People. What sort of people? People. What sort of people? Go on, name one. Snow White. <laughs> what? You know, the good-looking bird in the cartoon. There's good voice in there. Snow White. She ended up happy ever after. Well, that's your case for happiness, is it? Yeah. Snow White. Yeah. What about the dwarves? What about the dwarves? Well, they fancied her, you know, they loved her, they protected her, they put a roof over her head. So? So, after all that trouble, you know, what do they get? Does Sleepy get a quick snog round by the woodshed? No. Does Dopey dine out on scandalous stories regarding himself and Miss White? Mm. No, no. And the moment Mr. Handsome comes along with his pert nose, one kiss on the cheek, she's off. She's on the back of his horse, waving goodbye to seven broken-hearted dwarfs. <laughs> women for you. I still think that Kendall and Philippa could be like, you know, the exception. Do not associate that woman's name with mine, all right? <laughs> I thought you were supposed to be in Paris with Philippa. Stuff Paris. I hate Paris. And I hate Philippa. Shan't ask if you enjoyed yourself. <laughs> I mean, I thought she liked me. Come on.
Come on, she did like you. No, not for long, Len. She didn't like me. She didn't like me for a very long, Len. The moment we're off the plane, right, she's off. Flirting. Responding to the attentions of an Eiffel Tower lift attendant called Claude. <laughs> she goes off with a lift attendant called Claude. <laughs> no, they've actually dumped Claude, goes off with a pastry chef called Pierre. <laughs> Get off, poor old Claude. <laughs> so, Claude, what about me? What? I got hurt, Len. Come, come. Uh, look, listen, right? You've got every, every right. To say it, say it. Yeah. I told you. No, so. no, no. I'm say not, it. I'm not going to say I that. I told you so. I'm not. I'm not. But what I will say is, look, you know, in the future, when it comes to women, you just have to go with your instincts, you know. Future? What future? I haven't got a future with women. No future. From now on, right? I listen to you. I listen to what you say. I listen to my mates. <laughs> mates, laugh together. Laughing and drinking and oi talk, plenty of it, no. Hello, Candy, you're back early. Is Ben, is Philip with you? <laughs> not now, not never, Mrs. Gutlet. <laughs> and when you see her, right, tell her Kendall has seen sense. Kendall is where he belongs with his mates. The lads! <laughs> laughing and drinking. What are you talking about? I'm talking oit talk, Mrs. Coffee. <laughs> <laughs> oit talk, legs and lager. Way! Oh, yeah. <laughs> Legs and lager, Mrs. Gottlieb. Legs and lager and snooker. I want to see more snooker. You're all right, I'm, I'm fine. I've, I've never felt better, Mrs. Gottlieb. I've never felt better. <laughs> you know why? I'll tell you why. Because I'm with my mate. <laughs> my mate! <laughs> Legs, lager, laughing, football, wallop! I don't understand. Of course you don't understand. Of course you don't understand. You're a woman. He understands. He's a mate. <laughs> now, if you, if you don't mind, Mrs. Gottlieb, if you do not mind, me and Lenny mates are having a matey conversation, right? And we do not intend to let a woman interrupt us. You know, right, Len? Not quite, Kendall. No. <laughs> <laughs> are you ready, Lorraine? <laughs> Yeah, come on, put the coat on, it's going to be a bit nippy out there, I think. Lenny, where are you going? What, what? Pictures? Pictures? Whoa! Whoa! What? This is golly. He's not like me, him, you know. He's not like me. He doesn't want relationships. He wants, he wants other sort of things. Wallopy sort of things. <laughs> There's no romance with him, you know. No romance, straight down to business. You mean sex? Yeah. No looking about, straight to bed. Absolutely. Let's skip the pictures. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, mate. Lenny! Hey. How can I hold my head high? More bad behaviour from the men of the world in two weeks' time on BBC One. If you want to know what's happening next week, stay tuned. Never mind.